Today, I'm going to show you my five steps to win those big awards at Plain Air events. Put on your shoes, fire up the hot air balloon, and let's go on an adventure far, far away from here. The building you saw is the Swope Art Museum. At this event, I won two awards and now have a painting in their permanent collection thanks to the knowledge I'm about to share with you. I hope this advice will help you on your journey. Now, let's get started. Number one, the Larry Enigma. I knew a man named Larry Rudelick. He was a good friend and a great artist. He was one of the best storytellers that I ever met. Larry would travel all over the country to do plain air events and he won countless awards doing it. As soon as I would arrive at a paint out, I would check in and if Larry was there, I would toss all my gear in the back of his van and we would drive around looking for a spot to paint. We wouldn't be driving for more than five minutes and both of us would start pointing at something. Look at that, that's amazing. But one of us would say, let's just drive up a little ways and see if we can find something better. After about two hours of doing this, we would finally find the perfect spot. He would pull over, we'd get our gear out and start painting. After a couple hours of painting, I would walk over and see what Larry had done. It was always a monster of a painting. I'd walk back over to mine, feeling a little dejected, and start wiping it down with a rag. This pattern repeated itself for a couple years before I finally decided to change things. Larry was at a different point in his art journey. He had decades of experience that I didn't. Spending hours searching for the absolute best scene I could find and trying to knock it out of the park on the first try was a foolish attempt on my behalf. From that point forward, the first thing I would look for was good enough, which meant that I would go off on my own and give myself no more than 15 minutes to find something once I started looking. After you get that first painting under your belt, it takes the burden of performance off your back. But how do you know where to start painting? Number two, find home. When I arrived at this paint out and was getting my canvas stamped, my first question was, how big is the map? We were allowed to paint anywhere in the county. The second question was, where is the closest farmland? Everyone chimed in with directions to go and how long it would take to get there. After grabbing a cup of coffee, I jumped back into the truck, headed across the river and northwest out of town. They told me about five miles. I drove those five miles and turned on the timer. There was a guy working out in the barnyard. I turned in and got to talking with him. I got permission to paint and then went to work. The blue tractor painting was my first attempt for the paint out. I started small at eight by 10 and chose something that I knew I could paint. Now, I'm not always going to be able to paint on farms, but I also love painting old trucks, cars, any kind of vehicle. That's going to be my first attempt. I have a friend named Jeffrey Baumgartner, and Jeffrey is a real thespian. Jeffrey told me when he paints in a new town, the first thing he does is search out the local theater. He is a trained actor, and when people approach Jeffrey, he already has a built-in story to tell. It has gotten him more than a few collectors along the way. Now, a farm or a theater may not be your home, but you have to find something familiar to yourself. If you're a still life painter, look for gardens or a strange assortment of broken down vehicles in someone's yard. If you enjoy the figure, go to the busiest place in town and watch people. Farmers markets are usually going on on Saturday morning when these events take place. Paint what's familiar, start small and get a win. Give yourself something to fall back on. I want to briefly introduce you to some Indiana artists. This is Kevin Carlson, he's pure fire. Mark Burkett, excellent painter and printmaker. And Jeannie McLeish, oil painter, watercolorist. Number three, a new tool. Once you have a painting that you can frame, it opens a lot of opportunities for you. While most other artists will be scrambling to get something before time is up, you have the chance to push your skills further and learn from the fountain of which all representational artists drink, nature. If you have already done a painting that is about as good as you can currently paint, what benefit do you gain from doing another just like it? You might marginally increase your chance by finding a better scene, but it doesn't increase your chance of winning the next event. What if you were to take a chance doing something that you have no idea how to approach? I don't paint barn interiors often. I blocked it in and then realized I wasn't remotely close to how dark the scene truly was. At this point, I wasn't sure how to proceed, so I just put it away. But going forward, those initial values will be closer to where they need to be when I try a scene like this again. Sometimes you have to take a chance on a scene, and it might not work out. The reason why we started off with the familiar is so you don't go straight into hitting a dead end. It's easy to panic if the first painting you do doesn't work out. You are working on a limited time basis, and it could ruin the whole day. It is hard to think about the long-term game when you are currently losing the one in front of you. Number four, the other side of the coin. 
This may sound like a contradiction, but understand that there is a hierarchy to things. When I started painting by myself, once I got a decent painting, I would call Larry and go meet up with him. Larry, like most artists, was always on the lookout for beautiful motifs, and he would notice things that I didn't. Painting with artists whom you admire their work puts a little pressure on you to perform. Sometimes, that bit of pressure is what you need to get your mind to vault over obstacles you would otherwise not risk taking on. This is also a good time to go bigger. Bigger paintings draw a lot of attention when they are being judged. The larger the painting, the easier it is to read from afar. Two things you need to be aware of when painting with others. Number one, don't be the person that sets up right in front of someone and blocks their view. I've had this done to me and I've done this to other people. It's not a good look. Number two, Make sure you aren't painting the same basic scene as someone else. If you both end up getting a great painting, you just decrease both of your chances to win. One of the reasons big paintings win is because of the contrast of the smaller paintings around it. Think about it for a second. If you stick two paintings next to each other of the same subject, same vantage point, and they're both done well, will they stick out in your mind compared to the next painting, which is completely different? Number five, finding the iconic. Luckily for me, this tied back in with the last one, but it isn't necessarily going to happen when you are out in the field. This is a solid fallback plan that I use at plein air events and regularly at art exhibitions. You can't expect to win awards every time you do one of them. With that in mind, you have to take into account how to pay for your expenses. I will usually round out my little collection of work with one or two iconic scenes of an area. Sometimes they are easy enough to figure out without help. Other times, I will ask people at gas stations or restaurants or anywhere around town what the iconic spots are. You can post the question in this way. Where do people get their pictures taken around town? Not by who, but where. Or what spot in town or building do people all seem to love? That will typically work. My friend Larry was great at this. He could find them easily and then he would look for a unique angle or a vantage point to capture them from. But none of this can help unless you can take a complex scene and paint it well. I can help you do that. This video right here. Until next time.